Good morning, everyone. The uh, joint hearing of the Senate Capital Investment Committee and the House Capital Investment Committee will come to order. It is uh, Friday, May 12th, 9 a.m., and we are pleased to host our House colleagues here in the Senate Office Building. And uh, today we have uh, in an informational meeting on a spreadsheet that we've been working on, which is being passed out right now and was released to the public, um, I think, a few minutes ago. Um, I just wanted to make a few opening comments, and then I'll turn it over to my uh, co-collaborator -coll here and colleague from the House, uh, Representative Fu Lee and Chair Fu Lee. Um, I believe very strongly that, mm, I think it's because I only got four hours of sleep last night, but I'm sure Hannah and Handy got less. <laughs> um, I believe very strongly the importance of capital investment uh, for the entire state of Minnesota. We all have infrastructure needs. Um, we have a responsibility to uh, take care of the infrastructure needs of our state agencies and programs that serve the entire state. And we're really seeing this year how much, uh, how important infrastructure is for our local communities. And in order to serve the variety of communities in our state, uh, we've enlisted a lot of our nonprofits to help us. Um, one only needs to look at the drive here this morning to see the potholes in the street um, as a very vivid reminder of the importance of infrastructure. And I hope none of you have ever gotten a flat tire on the streets of St. Paul. If you have, please see me after the meeting and I will personally write you a check. Just kidding. Um, <clears throat> and um, I think it's, um, you know, when I was in the minority for six years, um, it was very hard. Um, to get a bill heard and to pass a bill. So I sympathize with my colleagues who are here in the minority, some for the first time. But I always felt that capital investment was where I could get projects funded. And Senator Senjum, when he was chair, he funded a bridge for me in downtown St. Paul for $52 million. And then we negotiated some more and we got some more money um, for our, uh, our communities. And we thought that, you know, that was a victory for us. So this bonding bill, the one that the Republicans defeated, um, the 1.5 billion was the most fair bonding bill, coupled with a cash bill for 393 that this Senate has ever seen. So it is, um, although I'm hopeful negotiations continue, we only have a week till the end of session, we have to move on. So we have before you today a pretty bare bones bill that we negotiated last night until 2.30 with the, with the governor's staff, um, and that we're going to present to you this morning. Thank you. And Chair Lee. Thank you, Chair Pappas. Um, members, thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, with the proposal, like the chair has said, is, you know, before us is the $1.295 billion uh, general fund cash infrastructure bill. I think that the best case in there for all of us in Minnesota was to take up House File 669 and 670. Uh, unfortunately, that did not come to pass, and so this is the path forward for us to have a discussion on this piece. And I'll turn it back over to Sarah and Pappas so that staff can start with the uh, spreadsheet walkthrough. Uh, so Excuse me, please proceed with the walkthrough. Madam <coughs> Chair and members, for the record, my name is Hannah Grunwald Nolner. I'm the Senate Fiscal Analyst on Capital Investment. And um, I'll start out the walkthrough of the spreadsheet uh, titled 2023 Capital Budget. So beginning with University of Minnesota on line six, 45 million in general fund for HEPR. On line 11 for Minnesota State, 45 million for HEPR. Minnesota State Academies, 900,000 in asset preservation and 7.837 million in dorm renovations and pre-design. On line 22 for Perpich Center for Arts Education, 900,000 in asset preservation. On page two, beginning with Department of Natural Resources, on line 26, 35.052 million for natural resources asset preservation, 20 million for betterment of buildings, 2.5 million for acquisition and betterment of public lands, 6.36 million for wildfire aviation infrastructure, 1 million for improving accessibility to state parks, 4 million for dam safety repair and reconstruction. And then under flood hazard, beginning on line 33, 
an undesignated amount of five million, two point five million for Browns Valley, three million for the city of Carver, eleven million for Moorhead. And then on line thirty seven, three million for community tree planting grants, three million for state forest reforestation, five hundred and thirteen thousand for DNR grant administration. Then under DNR State Trails, on line 41, 1.785 million for Millstown State Trail, 2 million for Root River State Trail, then Trails to uh, Political Subdivisions Grants, line 44, 2.75 million for the Lower Minnesota River Watershed District, line 45, 3 million for the City of Rainier, Line 46, 7.136 million, the city of Shakopee. Three million for Shell Shock River Watershed District. Then under the Pollution Control Agency on line 52, four million for local government stormwater infrastructure grants. 12.833 million for the capital assistance program for Pope Douglas Solid Waste Management. Then line 56, 26 million for Hennepin County Anaerobic Digester. 10 million for Olmsted County capital assistance. Moving on to page three, under Board of Water and Soil Resources, line 62, three million for local road wetlands replacement program, 3.5 million for reinvest in Minnesota CREP, and then under Department of Agriculture, 457,000 for MDA East Grand Forks building repair. For the Minnesota Zoo, 15.12 million for asset preservation. For the Department of Administration, 5 million for the capital asset preservation and replacement account. Line 79, 4 million for the capital complex security upgrades phase two. 4.542 million for Ford building demolition. And 304,000 for B3 guidelines for building renovation outreach. Moving on to Amateur Sports Commission, line 86, 4.4 million for asset preservation, and 3.5 million for skate park grants. Under the Military Affairs, line 92, 360,000 for Rosemont Readiness Center, the 2020 deficiency, 800,000 for Fergus Falls Readiness Center, 855,000 for Moorhead Readiness Center, 4.752 million for Marshall Readiness Center, and 1.7 million for Minnesota Military Museum at Camp Ripley. Moving on to page four, under the Department of Public Safety, line 101, 11.392 million for the State Emergency Operations Center increased cost, 6.1 million for BCA Southern Minnesota Regional Office and Laboratory, 247,000 for DPS grant administration. Line 105, 4.378 million for the city of Dilworth Fire Station. 1.3 million for the city of Edina Community Health and Safety Center. 3.172 million for the city of Golden Valley Remote Fire Station. 3 million for the city of Hibbing Regional Public Safety and Training Center. 75,000 for the City of Maplewood East Metro Public Safety Training Facility. 6.37 million for the City of Shoreview Lake Johanna Fire Stations of head Headquarters. 4.5 million for the City of Winona Public Safety Center. And then moving on to the Department of Transportation. On line 116, 22.5 million for local road improvement fund grants, undesignated and 22.5 million for the local bridge replacement program undesignated. On line 119 for Noka County Trunk Highway 65 improvements, nine million. For the city of Bewabic road improvements, 1.4 million. For the city of Burnsville, Nicolet Ave Bridge, 3.9 million. For Carver County, CH, excuse me, CSAH 18. 3.76 million. City of Coon Rapids Pedestrian Bridge, 3.5 million. Douglas County Box Culvert under US Highway 29, 2 million. City of Fridley North Town Rail Yard Overpass, 4 million. 
City of Ingrove, Inner, Invergrove Heights, 11, 117th Street reconstruction, four million. City of Medelia Road improvements, four million. City of Plymouth, CSAH 47, uh, 6.2 million. Line 129, City of Rochester Park and Ride Design, 800,000. City of Savage Road and Bridge Improvements Design, 800,000. City of St. Cloud Regional Airport, 2.5 million. City of St. Louis Park, Cedar Lake Road and Louisiana Ave, 5 million. City of St. Paul, Third Street Bridge, 25 million. City of St. Paul Park, Third Street Collector Roadway, 7 million. And Washington County, Trunk Highway 36 and Lake Elmo Ave Interchange, 15 million. On to page five, under the Metropolitan Council, beginning on line 140. 10 million for inflow and infiltration grant program. 10.441 million for Metropolitan Regional Parks. 44.5 million for bus rapid transit. 7 million for Apple Valley Transit Station. And 418,000 for grant administration. On line 146 for the City of Champlin, Mississippi Crossings, 1 million. Also for Champlin for Parkland, 1.25 million. For the City of St. Paul, Mississippi River Learning Center, 8 million. For the City of St. Paul, Walk on TP Center, 2.5 million. For Dakota County, Minnesota River Regional Greenway, 5 million. For Dakota County, Thompson Park, 2 million. For Dakota County Veterans Memorial Greenway, five million. For Minneapolis Park Board Grand Rounds Missing Link, five million. For Mississippi, excuse me, Minneapolis Park Board Cedar Riverside Rec Center, 3.5 million. For the City of Minnetonka, Hopkins Crossing Trail Improvements, 1.635 million. For the City of Minnetonka, Opus Public Space, 725,000. For Ramsey County, Bruce Vento Regional Trail, 4 million. For Ramsey County, Park at Rivers Edge, 6.22 million. For Ramsey County, Rice Street Revitalization, 3 million. For Three Rivers Park District, Mississippi Gateway Regional Park, 3 million. Moving on to Department of Human Services, uh, 4.3 million for asset preservation. 21.568 million for St. Peter's Sunrise and Tomlinson building renovation. 50 million for emergency shelter facilities uh, in general fund. On line 168, 3.388 million for the Harriet Tubman Center nonprofit. Under Veteran Affairs, 7.6 million for asset preservation and 77.765 million for Hastings Veterans Home Campus Upgrade. And Madam Chair, I will turn it over to Mr. Lee. Uh, Madam Chair and members, Andrew Lee from House Fiscal Staff. Starting on page six, under the Department of Corrections, 28 million for asset preservation. Then under the Department of Employment and Economic Development, 4.95 million for Business um, Development Public Infrastructure Grant Program. 750,000 for the Innovative Business Development Public Infrastructure Grants, and 1.805 million for agency grant administration funding. Under grants to political subdivisions, 1.41 million for Apple Valley Inclusive Playground, 630,000 for the City of Aurora Community Center, 1.8 million for the City of Bloomington Public Health uh, Facility Design, 5.1 million for the City of Brooklyn Center Community Center, 5 million for Brooklyn Park Community Activity Center, 3 million for the city of Chisholm, uh, Ice Arena and Curling, 2.04 million for the city of Chisholm Film Project, 2.35 million for the city of Crystal Aquatic Center, 11 million for the city of Duluth Spirit Mountain, 1.5 million for the city of Embarrass Regional Fair Association, Timber Hall. Um, one, 500,000 for uh, the City of Fridley Inclusive Playground. Um, 6.5 million for the City of Hermantown Ice Arena. Um, 1 million for the City of Litchfield Wellness Center. 2 million for the City of Litchfield Historic Facade Grants. Um, 6 million for the City of Maple Grove Community Center Renovation. 
1.85 million for the city of uh, Mendota Heights pilot knob, 3 million for um, the independent school district 2149 Minnewaska uh, Central Square in Glenwood, uh, 2.19, or sorry, that was 3 million and 2.19 million for city of Oak Park Heights redevelopment, 8 million for the city of Richfield Woodlake Nature Center, 14 million for the city of Rochester Regional Parks and Forestry Operations Center, 2.5 million for the city of St. Cloud, or city of St. Paul Inclusive Playground, 6 million for the city of St. Paul North End Community Center, 2.5 million for the city of St. Paul Conway Community Rec Center, 7 million for the St. Paul Porn Authority Hillcrest redevelopment, 600,000 for the city of Savage Sports Center, and 7.5 million for the city of Woodbury Central Park remodel. Under grants to nonprofits, uh, 2.5 million, and this is starting on page seven, uh, 2.5 million for uh, 30,000 feet um, Black Arts and Tech Center in St. Paul, 1.15 uh, million for Accessible Spaces Inc. in St. Paul, 1.5 million for the African Economic Development Solutions in St. Paul, 3 million for the African Center for Education Resource in Brooklyn Center, uh, 5 million for a gate housing in Minneapolis, 2.2 million for the Adai Ying Center in St. Paul, 487,000 for the Anoka Ice Arena Association, 8 million for Hope, Hope for Youth, um, Homeless Youth Center in Anoka, 1.5 million for Appetite for Change in Minneapolis, 6 million for Avenues for Youth in Minneapolis, 3 million for CAPI in Brooklyn Center, 3.5 million for Comunidades Latinas Unidas en Servicio in Minneapolis, uh, 2.75 million for Corner House in St. Anthony, 2 million for Cultural Wellness Center in Minneapolis, 500,000 uh, for Division of Indian Work in Minneapolis, 4.5 million for the Duluth Historic Armory Arts and Music Project, 300,000 for East Side Neighborhood Services in Minneapolis, 2 million for Film North in St. Paul, 1.5 million for Firefighters for Healing in Minneapolis, 2.6 million for Keystone Community Service Food Bank in Ramsey County, uh, 4 million for the Indian Health Board in Minneapolis, 1.5 million for Irreducible Grace Healing Arts Center in St. Paul, 3 million for Isroon in Minneapolis, 3.5 million for the Latino Economic Development Center in St. Paul, 24 million for the Leech Lake Wellness Center, 2.5 million for uh, Listening House in St. Paul, 1.25 million for Little Earth Neighborhood Early Learning Center in Minneapolis, 3.5 million for uh, Little Earth Residents Association in Minneapolis, 3 million for the Hmong 18 Council Inc. Uh, Center in St. Paul, 1 million for the Minnesota Fund in Minneapolis, 4.5 million for the Native American Community Clinic in Minneapolis, 300,000 for the new Native Theater in Minneapolis, 1.72 million for the Northrop King uh, Building in Minneapolis, uh, 5 million for the Norway House in Minneapolis, 500,000 for Open Arms in Ramsey County, 5 uh, million for Proceed Community Center in St. Paul, 450,000 for public functionary in Minneapolis, and three million for the Playwright Center in St. Paul. Uh, continuing on grants on page eight, three million for the Red Lake Band of Chippewa Red Lake Tribal College in Minneapolis, one million for the Rondo Innovation Campus in St. Paul, 1.82 million for the Sana Foundation in St. Paul, uh, five million for Simpson Housing in Minneapolis, 3 million for the Somali Museum in Minneapolis, 2.5 million for Southern Anoka Community Assistance Food Bank, 2 million for the Special Grilly Unit um, Hmong Veterans Museum, um, 7 million for St. Cloud Children's Museum, uh, 5 million for The Link in North Minneapolis, 3 million for True Friends Camp Courage in Wright County, 4 million for the Indigenous Peoples Task Force in Minneapolis, 1.8 million for the Ukrainian uh, Center in Minneapolis, 12 million for V3 Sports Inc. Um, in Minneapolis, 4.1 million for Walker West in St. Paul, 2.15 million for the Wellstone uh, Center in St. Paul, and 3.5 million for We Win Institute uh, in Minneapolis. On Public Facilities Authority, 41 million for state match for federal grants, 
And then for uh, water infrastructure fund, 22.5 million is the total, which is divided evenly, 11.25 million between drinking water grants and clean water grants. Under point source implementation, 22.5 million. Uh, for the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System uh, Project, 22 million. Then for grants to political subdivisions, uh, 510,000 for Arden Hills, uh, 3.5 million for Austin wastewater treatment improvements, 2 million for the city of Babbitt water and sewer, 1.75 million for the city of Dayton wellhead, um, 1.6 million for Osseo lift stations, 3.5 million for the city of Owatonna wastewater treatment improvements, 3.5 million for Lincoln Pipestone rural water, 4 million for first district wastewater treatment plant in Litchfield, uh, 10 million for the city of Lino Lakes water treatment, um, 25 million for the city of Mankato water treatment, 3.5 million for Medicine Lake, uh, 4.5 million for the city of Minneapolis water distribution facility, and continuing on PFA, 3 million uh, for the city of Mound for clean water improvements, 1.8 million for Rice Lake water uh, and sewer, 1.7 million for West St. Paul wastewater infrastructure, and 10.5 for the WLSSD district um, on Lake Superior. Then under Housing Finance Authority, 30 million for public housing rehabilitation. Under Historic Sites uh, or Historic Society, 3 million for Historic Sites Asset Preservation and under grants to Morrison County Warehouser Museum, 700,000. The grand total in spending is 1.338 uh, billion and then the, uh, there's uh, 40.172 million in cancellations, bringing the net total general fund spend in um, the spreadsheet to 1.298.5 billion. Thank you so much, Mr. Lee and Ms. Grunwald Noldner, and thank you both for your tremendous work that you've um, she sent me a note that you've done over the last several months. We do really rely on our staff, and thank you to all the staff in the back. Um, you've done a tremendous job. Um, I just wanted to add a few more comments in that um, you know traditionally our uh, capital investment bills have been strongly focused on roads and bridges and clean water, which is really really important. But we see that we now are a much more diverse state, and we have to take into account the needs of, the, of all Minnesotans. And so this, this proposal also um, includes um, support for the, for the disability community with accessible playgrounds. There's a tremendous amount of funding in here for homeless youth with a number of projects. Um, a number of health centers run by the nonprofit community that service uh, diverse communities. Um, we're looking at some um, relatively small grants for cultural centers and museums, um, food programs. You know, um, uh, sometimes people are still in food deserts and the, the mobile food vans can be very helpful and we've seen an, a rise in the need for, um, for these food programs um, and also job training and education. Um, so I feel like, you know, we did the best we can. Um, we did, leadership did decide out of our $2.3 billion target to, it was over two years, to preserve a billion dollars for next year. Um, so we hope that we can keep this going. And I know Senator Housley missed my opening comments, but I just want to assure her we are actually personal friends. Um, we travel together, we go to lunch together. Um, that we are you know, still open to negotiate with the uh, um, GOP Senate. And are there any questions or comments from anyone? Uh, so, uh, Representative Erdahl. Uh,
And uh, Senator Fa. I just wanted to say that uh, Chair Pappas and Chair Lee, I've worked with you guys through this entire process. I have never, I've been in a couple of conference committees, I've never seen two chairs who have worked so hard on a bonding bill uh, or on a, a, a bill together. You guys have had great leadership. Uh, and have worked so well together to put together something that works for the whole entire state of Minnesota. And it just goes to your, the tribute of your leadership uh, and work together. Um, I wish uh, that we would have had more, uh, more partnership from the other side. Uh, we have tried many times to work with our GOP members to try and put together a bill that did not uh, happen, mm -hmm. uh, but we, as Chair um, Pappas had said, we are still open to that. I think that Minnesota deserves uh, a bill that is representative of both parties if we can come together. And I have seen Chair Lee and Chair Pappas reach out multiple times throughout this process uh, asking for that partnership. Thank you. Representative Scraba. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, when, and maybe I wasn't just focused and then listening well enough, but when you said uh, we're open for negotiations on the billion coming up or the, of what is on the table now? Um, thank you, Representative Scrapa. I believe this is the um, cash bill. Um, there certainly still is a bonding bill that's available and adjustments could be made. Um, and we did have an agreement on uh, with Representative Erdahl last year of the 393 that the House, basically the bills the House pass. Um, we're still very interested in those bills. However, time is running short. It's Friday, and uh, your leader has said you need to adjourn by Thursday. So, you know, staff is trying to get the omnibus bills together, and their ability to, to write a bill is, um, and our ability to take them up on the floor and pass them and debate them, um, we're really running out of time, and I, my understanding is we're not meeting over the weekend, so um, which I have met many times in conference committee on Mother's Day. <laughs> so, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yeah, yes, Madam Chair, I do. Um, so, the bill presented to us, or the negotiated uh, budget presented to us right now, is not open for negotiations. This is the stone, and then. The other money that you alluded to, that is what's going to be up for negotiation then? Representative Lee. Thank you, Chair and Representative Scraba. Thank you for the question. So the proposal that we have in front of us, uh, based on the discussion over the last few days, is the proposal that we're going to move forward with. Uh, you know, to Senator Pappas' point, I think that House File 669 and 670 is still on the table right now. And if we don't have a good indication that there's willing partnerships from all, and I just want to acknowledge Representative Erdahl and uh, the House uh, Minority Caucus for working with the House Majority to send it over to the Senate. Uh, if we can't take up those two bills, then this is the bill that we're going to proceed forward with. Uh, Representative Scraba? Thank you. Okay. Representative uh, White, Ryer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Thank you uh, also for your hard work this session and to Chair Lee and to all committee members. Um, I particularly want to thank the GOP partners in the House who uh, 
were great to work with Lead Erdahl uh, for uh, putting yourself out there and taking um, a lot of heat for us. And I really appreciate knowing that we can work together in that bipartisan way. I hope to see that continue. Uh, we have had fairness in this bill as a goal throughout the process. Uh, we all had projects that were cut back, unfortunately, and not able to meet the full scope with, pro with leaving our partners having to find more funds. It's just a reality of going from the size of budget we had previously down to the uh, roughly 1.3 million. Um, so I, I know it's kind of, it hurts for all of us to say we know the need out there, we know the need across the com uh, communities across uh, the state. I can't uh, stop thinking about communities that I saw on the bonding tour, um, Gilbert and Pelican Rapids and, and communities in, in the Twin Cities. Um, all the needs are legitimate and all of the needs are valuable. Um, I do want to comment on the nonprofits that are included and um, make the point that these nonprofits are in there because they provide health and safety and they provide health and safety to so many people in Minnesota. Um, the firefighters, uh, multiple health clinics, public housing, youth shelters, services and facilities for people with disabilities. These are health and safety needs and they are going to people that's addressing the need, health and safety needs of people who have been underserved and underrepresented. And to me, we are taking a stand to say, this is part of how we should be using our state resources. This is part of our mission as a state of Minnesota, as a, all of us, not, not a DFL or a GOP part of the state of Minnesota. We all need to be thinking about all of us, and I know from the conversations I've had one-on-one -on -one with people, um, that we share that. I hope we will come together in how we show that and find ways in the next rounds or in future bills yet this year uh, to make sure that we all get a little bit closer to feeling like we've gotten a win. Thank you. And um, Senator Mohammed. Thank you, Chair Pappas. Um, you know, this is my first time on the bonding, uh, well, it's my first um, session. Um, and I had no idea how this committee functioned and or worked, and I'm still very confused by it. But um, I remember the first time that the first bill had come up, it had um, so many projects for members that were from across the aisle. And I thought it was a pretty good bill across the board because it was the bill from last year. And um, I felt like it w you were extending a hand to our members who um, needed these projects, which are still in need, and we should still find a way to get those done. Um, and they're the ones who attached it to Social Security. And we still got that done this session. So there was no reason to, um, to hold that. There still is not, there's no reason to hold that bill up. And I think we should find a way to get that done this session. Um, but overall, I think this bill in front of us, the cash bill, is a good bill. I think it, um, it is very equitable. It has far more uh, posse projects in here, which is the thing that I advocated most. So I want to commend and thank you for doing that. Because um, I think it's important that when we, realize, when we talk about um, uh, the bonding bill, it also has to be equitable. We need to include um, projects from, um, from communities of color. And so I want to thank you for doing that. I hope that we can still get the bill done, the other bill. I know it's still on the table. And so hopefully we'll get that one done as well. Senator Housley. Thank you, Senator Pappas, and it is true, we are friends and we travel together, but this... Oh, we plan to travel together. We plan to travel together. Uh, that's right, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, this is, and you know, you know what I'm going to say here, that this is very disappointing. Uh, the, the Senate Republicans came here, we door knocked all summer and fall, People wanted tax relief. People wanted uh, to, to go easy on their pocketbooks. And with an $18 billion surplus, um, we asked for some tax relief. We, we had been talking, um, Senator Pappas, uh, actually quite friendly, you and I with the offers going back and forth. 
uh, and Representative Lee, you and I had talked. Um, everything was actually, I thought, going pretty well up until the meeting where all the leaders came in and, and uh, Speaker Hortman came in and, and did an about face and everything changed and uh, the deal changed and I really questioned and I asked you this and I asked uh, Senator Bobby Joe Champion, I even called uh, Senator Dietzik and I said, who's running the show over here in the Senate? Because the bonding bill is in the Senate it's, it was sitting in finance committee, and that's where we should have been working on it. Uh, so to all of a the sudden then pull up the cash bill, and I know you're going to say, you know, you said a cash bill was coming, um, but we were still negotiating. And for those that haven't been here before, um, the bonding bill is usually the last bill to leave the floor. We've, we've passed a bonding bill off on the last day of session. Ten minutes to midnight is when the bonding bill comes and or when it gets passed off the floor and these deadlines from speaker hortman um the first one we had was february 6th so it just it just these deadlines kept coming and going and we knew what the deadline was it's the last day of session which i guess speaker hortman also says that's changed uh, so again who is running the senate um is it Speaker Hortman, or do we get to do what we want with the, with the Senate bonding bill over here? This kind of feels like a little bit of, of retaliation, like you Senate Republicans aren't going to agree to what we want, so we're just going to go all cash, and we don't need any of you. We're going to ignore 50% of the state and do what we want and fund all of our DFL projects and all of our DFL districts, and to heck with you Republicans. Well, there's, there's so many so many worthy projects and very, very neat. And there are some great nonprofits in here, but there are people drinking bottled water for the last two years uh, in some districts because the water is so bad. So it just, I thought we had a partnership. I thought we were working together and then things changed and it's, it's really, really disappointing. We, we actually gave another offer last night. Um, we had a $1 billion tax relief. We, we said we'd pass uh, House File 669. We'd pass House File 670, which, by the way, those weren't last year's bill. They are pieces of it from last year's bill, but somehow the rhetoric has become around here. It was last year's bill. Well, there's so many new people here this year, and that isn't last year's bill. So we made an offer again last night. for We'd pass that uh, House File 669. We'd pass House File 670. Um, Nursing homes, we all know what's going on in our nursing homes. It's, uh, uh, they're in dire needs. It, it's uh, a crisis right now in our nursing homes. And the, the Democrats refuse to fund our nursing homes. So we said, please give them $200 million for uh, nursing homes and long-term care facilities across the state. And then uh, $1 billion in tax relief. They didn't like that, rejected that. So we said, okay, let's do $800 billion and give it back to 800 million, thank you, 800 million, give it back to the taxpayers. That's what they want. Call up people in your district. Give them their money back. That's what they want. So, so we have been trying, um, and we want to continue to work to get this done. I think, um, I think it's extremely disappointing and really feels like a, a punch in the gut uh, and retaliatory uh, this all cash bill that um, has been put forward today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator uh, Housley. I would just, you know, clear the record that, you know, all along the House majority and the Speaker have said that we will pass a clean uh, bill, which, you know, our Republican colleagues in the House, the Minority Caucus, really thankful for their partnership and passing a bill that addressed the statewide needs that we have the missed opportunity of funding in 2021 and 2022. And we were able to achieve that on March 6th, uh, spend two months and all along the offers that you know, have been brought forward are tied to issue items that are outside of the uh, capital investment world. And so just wanted to clear that you know, our offer from the House majority has been, you know, let's pass up a clean bill and then we can have conversation about how we are going to spend uh, the uh, general fund cash target that was allocated to the Capital Investment Committee. Senator Dibble. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, to the extent that we are linking uh, subjects and bills and issues, I'll just uh, um, 
point out uh, that the, the tax bills um, that are being conferred, both the House version and the Senate version, I'm most familiar, of course, with the Senate version, um, uh, uh, is uh, you know, a pretty impressive proposal with $4 billion in tax rebates, in tax cuts, a lot of, of effort uh, to respond to folks paying their, their property taxes, whether those be homeowners or renters, um, people with children, people with children in, in child care, uh, working families. Um, it's, you know, it's, uh, I think Minnesotans are going to be extremely happy if we get, uh, and, and the House does even better. <laughs> so I think uh, Minnesotans will, uh, will be will pre pretty happy once uh, we get those uh, bills uh, ship shape and, and ready for final passage. Um, so I invite those who aren't on the tax committee to take a closer look at those tax bills because you know, $4 billion going back to people's pockets is, and household budgets is not, um, you know, not nothing. Um, I wanted to speak to this bill briefly. Um, you know, I'm, you know, on the one hand, extremely pleased to represent Ryer's points that some of the organizations that uh, take care of people uh, in their most urgent moments of need, particularly young people who are homeless. Um, uh, we have you know, $50 million for emergency shelter facilities. That's historic and, and, and urgently needed, as, as we can see as we move around the community. We have a lot of conversations about that issue on transit. Uh, Senator Jasinski and I serve on the Transportation Committee. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, you know, everything uh, is, is fairly significantly reduced in terms of, you know, the amount, particularly those uh, sorts of things that are going to unit, local units of government, I'll, you know, lest you think that um, uh, the chair of the House Bonding Committee is being parochial. None of the city of Minneapolis's four priorities are reflected in this. I think that's very self selfless on his part, you know, nothing for the stormwater tunnel, which we've been trying to complete in Minneapolis for a number of years. Uh, nor the Nicollet Bridge, uh, nor the Emergency Operations Training Facility or ADA improvements. So, um, you know, so um, lest you think this is completely loaded up for the things that the chairs um, are, are looking for, that is, that is incorrect. Um, and uh, there is a substantial reduction across the board. If it were a bonding bill, you know, uh, general fund appropriation supports a lot more in bonding, and bonding, of course, is appropriate to do for these capital assets that last uh, 30 years or more. So. It's, um, it, you know, it's a, I think, an impressive document, an impressive proposal. It's going to help a lot of people, put a lot of people to work. Um, uh, but it's, it's, you know, it's a haircut. Uh, it's just the reality of the circumstance. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Senator Dibble. So we have Representative Hussein Lilly and then Jasinski. Rep Representative Hussein. Thank you, Chair Lilly and um, Senator Pappas, Chair Pappas, uh, for um, your dedication and hard work and uh, try to address the, what Minnesotans are asking. This bill is a great bill and I uh, look forward. Not only that, you have worked with individuals, you try to reach out uh, across the aisle and try to do the best we can. And uh, thank you for trying and, and working a day and night and try to come up with the great equity bill that would address and drive the whole Minnesota that what's it really needed. And I agree with uh, Vice Chair Ryer for uh, it's time for us to invest organization that doing the legwork, reaching out the community that hasn't been reached out in the past. Uh, this is an equitable bill. We're trying to address uh, the whole state of Minnesota and I'm very excited and, and happy about it. The, the legwork that you are been doing, uh, Chair Lee, and reaching out uh, both aisles, we could have done a little bit better if we have a more negotiation and open to uh, both aisles. But this is a great bill and uh, appreciate it for your dedication and hard work. Thank you, Representative Hussain. Representative Lilly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, just really want to start off by thanking uh, uh, you, uh, Chair Lee and, uh, and Senator Pappas for working so hard on this. And I I, you know, I, I've been on this committee for a while, and uh, and I, 
I've watched it, and you're a great chair, and uh, and I know that you've put a lot of thought and uh, amazing amount of work with your team and the staff, and uh, you know the public just has no idea how much work you know, that you put in, and just want to thank you, and it uh, it shows in the product. Um, I just want to thank also the GOP in the House just uh, for their great courage and leadership for uh, um, supporting the bill that went through the House body. And uh, that was mentioned earlier, but I just I think it's important to be said again and again. Um, and uh, I think, you know, this is a different kind of bill um, that happens in the legislature. And like I said, I've been lucky enough to be on this committee for a while. So you... you you tour the state and you get attached to a lot of these projects and they, they may not even be your own, um, quite honestly. And you get, you know, you get on the college campuses and so this bill reflects investments in the Heaper and the college colleges all over the state, everyone's districts, all over. And, uh, you know, someone mentioned about knocking on doors. Well, you know, the, I think voters expect us to take care of what we have as Minnesotans, and this this bill reflects that. And uh, colleges and universities are all over Minnesota, and there's a lot of buildings. I mean, just uh, once you if you actually tour, it's shocking. I know sometimes they like to show us the worst of them, but uh, every once in a while they'll take us through a, one of the new buildings that are built. But uh, um, so there's not that exciting part, yeah, you know, heaper. A lot of people don't talk about it, but I, I think it's really important to be said that this bill takes care of Minnesota. This bill protects it and this, these investments. And we need to pass bonding bills every cycle that takes care of the assets. Same with the DNR properties. Tons and tons of properties. And that the, there's asset preservation uh, shown in here. And, you know, the asset preservation word shows up, you know, per pitch and, you know, uh, academies, just other areas, and it's just, it's not that exciting, but it's such important work. Um, there's things that are uh, dangerous that are happening. This bill will save lives. Um, I think, you know, a couple of us at the table are East Metro. Um, Lake Elmo Boulevard has been on the news. Um, Lake Elmo, and this bill invests, that's just one example, but, you know, if we can save lives, <laughs> that's pretty neat stuff. And so it's not just in mine. You go a whole big list of uh, uh, road infrastructures. Uh, you know, I think uh, I've been on 65 in Blaine, and there's all those stoplights and all sorts of, you know, the mayor, you know, I used to serve with him. He was a former uh, Republican member of the House. And, uh, you know, he's asking, for, you know, help us out. So that's, that's going on. There's readiness things, you know, in our veterans. There's, I mean, really great work. Your veterans' homes. There's... Uh, and at one point there was, you know, and I'll just kind of wrap up, but, you know, being on this committee, and, you, and I hope all of you that are newer uh, hop on the bus and go see some of these things. And so some of the projects I get actually excited about, uh, some of these new ones that we're bringing to the table, you know, and you get, you visit with people like 30,000 feet, and uh, you get attached to them to see the gr great work that these folks are doing, appetite for change, um, connecting people. Amazing work, Sana, in uh, Representative Jung's area, Sana Foundation, Tony Sana, amazing, amazing work. Um, that V3, I mean, their hope is to create, you know, maybe an African-American swimming Olympic champion. I mean, how cool is that? We had Suni Lee, think about it. So anyways, there's, I'm sorry to walk on to, yeah, you could just do the whole list, but anyways, I, I, I really hope all of you get on the bus and uh, kind of see what I see because like, a lot of these projects aren't in my district, and, and, but you get excited. And we need to pass these bills. It's just really sad for Minnesota that we do not pass these on a regular basis. Yep. And the House has leaned on, leaned into it, uh, and I'm really proud of the work. And I think the Senate's trying to. And, uh, again, I want to thank our GOP colleagues for stepping up with it. The House is committed to passing a bill, and we really, it's good for Minnesota to pass these on a regular basis, and it's, just, it's sad to me that we don't, and uh, anyways, that's my final comment. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Senator Jasinski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Chair Fooley and, and Chair Pappas. Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty frustrated. Uh, I've been on the bonding bill for six years. I was my seatmate with Senator Senjum, who worked very, very hard on a bonding bill to make sure that 
It was done uh, across the state with a balance of projects and infrastructure and HEPR and colleges and, and roads and bridges. And uh, he took it very personal to make sure that he worked with everybody in a bipartisan way. Uh, you know, I, I think he was 73 years old at the time, uh, was up for 24 hours straight. Uh, he had people coming to him left and right from our side of the aisle, from the other side of the aisle, and he really truly worked hard to get a balanced bill. Um, <coughs> this is not a balanced bill. Uh, this really does seem like it's retaliatory. Um, the nonprofits versus, you know, there's a lot of wants in here, and that's great, but there's a lot of needs across the, straight, uh, across the state with infrastructure, wastewater, clean water uh, that really are being neglected. Um, you know, we, I had $11 million in, a, in, a, in the previous bill for Otana for wastewater, and now it's 3.5. Uh, and all those, all those inf important infrastructure costs have, have now been shifted to nonprofits. Um, it's frustrating. And our caucus is very frustrated. Um, we are under one party control here in the legislature this year. Um, there's 49% of the state that's not being heard. And it's from policy bills to tax bills to bonding bills. It's, this is not what people in Minnesota expect. It's really not. I have a pretty moderate Republican I talk across the aisle as a mayor for eight years. You have to work across things. Uh, and what I hear in my district when I go back is frustration of what's going on. There's, everything is on a partisan vote. We're not seeing cooperation together to work together, to work across Minnesota to do this together. And the bonding bill is the one bill, the GEO bill, is the one bill we work across the aisle together to get the seven votes, the supermajority that we need, and it's not being done. And to take projects away to try to work together instead of trying to add projects to get cooperation together, to get people to vote together, is the way I've always seen it done. Not the opposite, not of going the other way, and not threatening to do an all cash bill instead of a geo bill. That's the frustrating part. And it's unfortunate. I mean, I, my, my anger is gone now. It's it, now it's just sadness for what's happening here at this legislature. It, it used to be excited to come here and work together and do that. And I'll tell you, this work this year, even you see it from staff members, you see it from nonpartisan, of watching what's going on. And it's just frustrating. Um, so uh, this bill is is frustrating to see that we're not working together. Um, it's not the way Minnesota's worked before. Uh, and it's not the way we should operate in the state of Minnesota. I just, it, it's frustrating. So, uh, very let down by this bill. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Jasinski. Representative Franson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, a lot of things here. Um, so, Mr. Chair, you mentioned that the House Republicans showed great courage for voting for this bill. And I would say yes, we did. Because we had the same vision that we were going to start playing catch up on some of these projects that had been neglected due to a lack of bonding bill, okay? We went against our own party because we saw a need. There should be nobody in Minnesota in the land of 10,000 plus lakes that are using bottled water in order to get clean water. I heard this bill saves lives. Well, Representative Lilly, in the previous bill that we passed out of the House, there was $8.87 million for a permanent solution to rising water in the Canesto mine pit. That funding is not in this bill. In this bill, there's 54 nonprofits funded, 17 in St. Paul, 26 in Minneapolis, and four in greater Minnesota. In my own district, my tech school asked me, Mary, help us get this pre-design done for our transportation uh, building that we've been working on for a number of years and the costs keep going up and up along with every other freaking project in the state of Minnesota because of inflation, because of neglect. And now those same projects that we passed out of the house floor 
Many of them are not in there. So I too share with the Senate Republicans that I do feel that this is a retaliatory bill and that even though we put our necks on the line to get a bill passed off of the House floor, that we too are being punished. And our constituents in the state of Minnesota deserve better, Mr. Chair. So I ask this committee to put aside the differences and come together for the greater good of Minnesota. There should be zero people drinking bottled water. There should be zero people worried about a pit flooding out their town. This is ridiculous. Thank you, Representative Franson. Next, Representative Scraba. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I got to tell you, I had a, a, a excellent experience with the group. Um, I'm learning a lot about how our state works. Uh, coming from northeastern Minnesota, you know, I, mean, I don't like, I never came down here a lot, but now I'm living here, and every morning I walk on the trails, and I, I get a appreciation of how folks live. Uh, uh, I'm starting to meet my homeless people because it's warm enough. They're starting to move on to the trails, and uh, again, that's just part of life. It helped a guy this morning clean up, but, and, and I look at the $183 million for the uh, nonprofits and I like you look at it like it's helping people okay so you guys right now are saying we're gonna put our money into people and and I'm not I'm like okay so how how can we also help the roads and the bridges how can we help our infrastructure how can we work together to get the other half of this formula to to, to make it work and when when we talked about uh, I think Representative Franson brought up the 54 nonprofits that got funded, 17 are in St. Paul, 26 are in Minneapolis, and four in greater Minnesota. And one of the things that I've learned down here and that I knew, but I'm really being impressed upon down here, is uh, is it equitable, is it inclusive, and that sort of thing. And right now, I gotta tell you, <laughs> I'm not feeling very inclusive with all the nonprofits, because we have a lot of good nonprofits up north and, and in our area also. And, and I guess what, I'm, what I'd like to, a statement is, there are, there are projects up north in, in my district that didn't get funded that I thought would, that would make a difference for everyone, not just a certain group of people, but all of Minnesota. So uh, I'm hoping with the negotiations that if there is a billion dollars left on the table or if we're going to use that for next year's bonding. And, uh, but if, if this set of negotiations on this bill in front of us, uh, capital budget, I'm hoping we can revisit something before it gets to uh, this self-imposed shutdown on Thursday, which I, I, again, we didn't have a say in that. I would, I would much rather go till the end um, that's what I signed up for. So I'm, I'm hoping we can come to a better agreement, but thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Scrabber. So uh, members, do we have any others before I turn over to the leads and the chair for closing? So we got Chair Zong and then Representative Grasso. Chair Zong. Thank you, uh, Chair Lee. I mean, wow. Folks, are you listening to this? Senate Republicans are saying that this is not an inclusive enough bill. They had an opportunity. We passed a bonding bill in the House, but they decided to hold it hostage, putting lives and jobs on the line. And now Chair Lee and Chair Pappas came up with a solution so we can get some for people, and if they're throwing fit about it, get out of here. Representative Grasso. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I mentioned this before uh, to you, that this should have been a cash bill from the start, this session, with a $19 billion surplus, with the increases in, in billions of dollars of taxes, new taxes that are coming at citizens. This should have been a one Minnesota cash bill from the start. The one that we had, the one that you guys put together, the one that was agreed upon, that would have helped across the state. 
I'm one of those GOP members in the House that voted against, and it was because we were going to put people further into debt. There's no sense in doing that when we had $19 billion surplus to work with. So all of this stuff, all of this retaliatory garbage that has come now would have been avoided had we used the cash wisely to begin with and done a, done a one Minnesota, represent everybody, take care of metro and outstate, and been done with it. So I wish we'd have, I wish we'd have, hindsight's 20 of course, but I wish we'd have done what I asked to do before. With that, I'm done. Representative Erdahl, then Senator Housley, and then I'll close. Representative Erdahl. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And this time I've turned the on switch on so that other, maybe you can hear me. You know, I haven't been trained to be in the Senate, so it never will be. Uh, for, uh, I think we've had a, you know, a good conversation here, but I, I need to, I guess, repeat a few things and, and amplify a little bit. Um, first of all, you know, there are there are political realities that we face. And coming in the, into the minority, uh, I would have liked to have done just a cash bill too. But again, that's not the way the cards were dealt. That's not the political reality. And so we tried to do the best we could uh, with, uh, with a $1.5 billion uh, general obligation bill and then with, with some cash. and. I will agree with the comments made. We did an awful good job, and it passed off the House floor. Not a perfect bill, there never will be, but we did, a, I think, a, a very good job. I, I do not think that what we have before us right now is a good bill. It does not address a lot of the needs of, of Minnesota that need to be addressed. Uh, Frankly, I hope this is a practice effort that we're going through today and that we can still salvage some of the good that we've worked on previously and, and get this moving. Uh, there are public safety needs not addressed. The bottled water, the contaminated water in Andover. Uh, you know, Canisteo, you have a railroad line at risk with the erosion of the, uh, of the mine pit. Uh, we have towns being threatened with flooding. Uh, we have, again, 54 nonprofits, the great preponderance of those nonprofits in uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Uh, the needs across Minnesota are not being addressed by this. Uh, I do appreciate the, the work done before, uh, working with the Representative Lee, um, and uh, I should also mention you know, staff. Uh, Jenny Nash and, and Chelsea Axelson from the Republican side, but working on these things together, uh, we did a lot of good things, most of which are not reflected here. If, if this were such a good bill, those things that we had done before would be more strongly reflected and they're not. So um, we, need, we need to still do better. We are here to serve the needs of the people of the state of Minnesota. They expect us to provide through capital investment to meet their needs and we're, we're not doing it. Uh, we still do have the opportunity and I would hope that we can still come together and seize that opportunity and do the right thing for the people of Minnesota. Thank you. Sir Housley, if I may uh, acknowledge Representative Myers real quickly for our comments and then you. Representative Myers. Uh, thank you, Chair Lee and uh, Co-Chair Ryer. I've really had a good experience on this committee with you guys. We've had a lot of conversations outside. Um, I think you know where I come from, um, you know, what I try to support, how I find, you know, try to look at things operationally, you know, try to build those relationships, um, you know, and, and try to be as bipartisan as I can. Um, you know, it, it's been mentioned before here, um, you know, the, the access to safe, clean, you know, water and how important that is. And, and I think some of that is lacking now from what I see in here. And, and, and I could talk about just, 
you know, again, all the doors that I knocked and I would just drive up to, or, you know, walk up to people's houses and you could see just bottles and bottles of water stacked in their garage or Colgan five gallon bottles sitting there because they can't drink the water. The water's brown. They won't, you know, bathe their kids in it. And I mean, and I get it all the time and I've got a mayor that's texting me right now in the city of Mound that just said, you know, fight for us. You know, it, it went from 10 million to 3 million. And I know there's all sacrifices, um, but that's a town of, you know, 10,000 people that are really struggling. And this is, um, I, I guess I'm surprised because I know my, uh, my DFL senator would be upset about this as well. So um, I, I do hope that there is something that can be done. Um, you know, I'll continue to work with you guys, but I think this is uh, putting people and a lot of people and all people in, in, a, in a situation we don't want to put them in. So thank you. Thank you, Representative Iris, Senator Housley. Thank you very much, um, Chair Lee. Uh, I, I guess we're not surprised. I'm not surprised that this is what uh, you and Chair Pappas came with and, and the Democrats brought before us today because this is how the whole session has gone. Uh, one party rule, cram through anything you want, doesn't matter what the Republicans say, why work across the aisle, because you don't have to. You've waited six years for this. Senator Pappas has said it many times. I've waited six years for this. Well, now you guys have it, and this is what you do. Uh, your priorities are very, very clear. Uh, Nonprofits and your local projects are much more important than uh, roads and bridges or, or clean water across the state of Minnesota. Minnesotans should be very concerned. This is what one party rule gets you, just whatever they want to do. They've got 18, 19 billion dollar surplus, uh, and they're going to spend it on all of their priorities and ignore 49 percent of the state. And now, I, I sometimes I wonder if you wanted to go a cash bill anyway from the get-go, and this was all uh, just theater, these offers back and forth. But now we do have a cash bill. So, like my friends down the down the uh, table here, um, we should have done a cash bill from the get-go. $19 billion, let's do a cash bill. Well, we have one right here. But not any input from the Republicans on this cash bill that you've put together here. So it's extremely disappointing. Um, Minnesotans should be very concerned at what's happening here at the Capitol because the people of Minnesota are the ones who are losing with this one-party control. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Housley. And uh, before I go to my comments, I just want to say thank you to... Uh, all the members for being here today, to staff from uh, Senate Fiscal, House Fiscal, uh, Senate Council, House Research, and then also to the agencies, especially uh, MMB, for providing their uh, expertise and guidance uh, with some of the agency items that we have in this proposal and also in House File 669 and 670. Uh, just to you know, reflect on some of the remarks that I heard from my colleagues uh, today is that, you know, the bills that we are putting for are being crammed through our partisan bills. I would just like to note again that House File 669 and 670 were passed by the House with strong bipartisan support two months ago. And right now, House File 669 and 670 is sitting in Senate finance that can be taken up with an agreement so that we could pass it through to the governor to be signed uh, this week and early next week so that we can all start working on an additional cash uh, infrastructure bill that will, again, benefit the entire state. And so just to, to close it off, time is running short. We do have two bills that, you know, people are saying that is not reflected of, or at least, you know, with this proposal in front of us. If we could pass House File 669 and 670, we have an opportunity, again, to relook at this and see how could we make additional investment for all communities across the entire state. Uh, with that, members, I really appreciate all of you being here today. I look forward to ongoing conversation as we enter into the final days of the uh, session. This joint uh, Senate and House Capital Investment Committee hearing is adjourned.